Hi, Catherine. Hi. Is this life fascinating, particularly when you start getting older and you look backwards and you see how the interesting dots connected and sort of made your path? Though I, I wanted to talk about how the conferences got started, the evolution of Stop Trafficking US. By the way, um, Stop Trafficking ME and Stop Trafficking US, the little play on, on words there. So Stop Trafficking ME was Stop Trafficking UE, the run survivor, uh, and Stop Trafficking the people in UE. Uh, stop trafficking U.S., stop trafficking us, and stop trafficking in the United States of America. So, yes. And they're both under the same 501c3 uh, nonprofit. So. so I started in 2015, and at, at first I was joining organizations and, and seeing where the right fit for me was. And I was asked to speak at many church groups. The church groups were showing uh, uh, movies uh, about global human trafficking. So the umbrella of human trafficking is sex trafficking, labor trafficking, and organ trafficking. That's all three are under the umbrella of human trafficking. So at first, when I was trying to join different groups, nothing felt like going to me. I felt like things needed to be done differently. And I couldn't seem to connect with a group or an organization that was doing it the way that my heart said to do it. So that was why I... I left the different groups and started the nonprofit. Actually, it was this lady that said, Shay Bellas, who said, you need to do this on your own, and brought me uh, to, the, to her lawyer and said, these folks can help you set up the, your nonprofit, which we did. So that first year was just going to all these different groups, determining, okay, I want to do this on my own, and then speaking at different faith-based organizations and different tra trafficking organizations, Cape Cod, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Maine, usually with other people. Uh, they were doing fundraising for their church, their organization. They would show some sort of a movie, and then... Um, then it was followed by a channel, and I was generally one of the channelers. And then in, in doing that, the brand sort of surfaced from, from that. This is all sort of happening at the same time. And what I noticed was, and some of you have recently seen the movie Freedom that came out, and you know, the lights come on, and you're just sort of blown away. Well, that's what was happening at the places that I was on a panel. The lights would come on and people were just like the oxygen had left the room. They were just blown away by what they were seeing. And they felt, generally speaking, hopeless and helpless. Which uh, my remedy for that was to tell them the starfish story. So the starfish story became the brand of Stop Trafficking US. So you'll see the little girl holding the starfish. And, and I would bring starfishes with me wherever I spoke. And, and pretty soon I became my own roadie. <laughs> I would log in my little kitten heel pumps and my church clothes. And, and I would carry this great big screen and projector and computer and if you knew me you would be cracking up right now because me and technology it's a dysfunctional relationship so i would haul everything and they would either be a white 
rock from Sebago, well not maybe that, and these little cards that the girls from jail had done for me and laminated with trafficking statistics. And then there would be little starfishes up and, and I would put them on the tables with my business cards and and I would present by by myself. So I went from the groups to doing it by myself. And then I thought, boy, I need to do this like my sales career. And that is um, bringing my A-team. So who is going to be in the audience? What language do they best understand? Who do I have in my contact list that can help deliver this message in the language that these people can understand? So some people can hear me say the sky is blue and they're like, eh, if you're the survivor, maybe it's blue, maybe it's not. But if I brought Jonathan Sarbeck, the district attorney, and he said the sky was blue, damn straight it's blue. Jonathan says it's blue, it's blue, <laughs> right? Or maybe they need to hear from um, a, a, a sex therapist, or maybe they need to hear from an addiction specialist, or maybe they need to hear from Homeland Security, um, or maybe they need to hear from another kind of law enforcement, or maybe they need to hear fill in the blank. So what's the audience I'm going to speak to and what's their language and who do I need to bring to have the greatest impact with this group? So now we've progressed to that kind of, of gathering. Uh, and then I went from that to, well, how can I reach even more people? Um, who's doing conferences? So like I went to the Massachusetts uh, Child Advocacy Annual Conference. And who are their speakers? And what does that look like? And then I went to the Thistle Farms in, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, what do their conferences look like? Who are they bringing in as speakers? What does that look like? The um, the Governor's Human Trafficking Summit went, went to that. Um, who were their speakers? And what does that look like? And I thought, boy, um, you know, this, the speakers that they're using, um, okay, and the audience, it's sort of like preaching to the choir when a minister is telling the congregation who's already saved that they need to be saved. Duh. So the conferences explaining what they already know was duh and I'm I'm totally generalizing but hopefully you you get my point who I wanted to talk to was everybody else every the 1.3 million people in the state of Maine the vast majority of which does not know what the term sex trafficking even means you know and not you know downstate or upstate like everywhere and it didn't matter what their profession police officers would almost whisper i don't completely understand can you fill me in uh and People didn't understand the difference between sex trafficking and prostitution. Sex workers and prostitution, like, and where do they come from? And is this, uh, is this, you know, immigrants from another state who is in a caravan of vehicles, thus the word traffic, and they're like, you know, a bus with, people, prostitutes in it? Like, what does this even mean? So how can I, how can I explain this the most effective, efficient way? Maybe a conference. So I asked my, my friend, the district, the um, assistant district attorney of Cumberland County for juveniles, Christine Tebow. I said, you know, you've been to in your very long um, 
respect worthy career, who was the best speaker? Who did you, you know, who was the best speaker? And she said, Victor Veith. Victor Veith with the Zero Abuse Project is the best speaker I've ever heard in my career. If I could pick one person, it would be him. So um, again, if you know me, uh, I can't organize <laughs> a dinner, right? But, uh, you know, so I, I reach out to this guy and he said, here's my phone number, call me. So I, I called him and I said, look, I, I, I don't know how to do a conference. I don't know how to do any of this, but the only way I'm going to learn is to ask. So forgive my ignorant questions. And we began a conversation and he said, when is the best month to be in Maine? And I said, well, I think it's September. And so we picked uh, three days in September and we said, okay, that will be our goal. Actually, we picked September and, and he, and I said, well, what, what kind of conference do you think would be the most impactful? Like what, what would you do? And he said, I believe that educating the faith leaders is essential. Like people don't even get how important that segment of any community is. We have to educate them. And it's a three-day process um, conference and and it's good and it's needed. It's vital. And I said, okay, um, how much is it? And he said, well, we'll work with you, but here's, you know, here's what it generally usually costs. And I said, okay, I will, I'll work on that. It was like um, $25,000. You have to fly people in and you have to get them a hotel and a rent a car and there's a, a food budget for them. And then you have to rent the building and, um, all, you know, that you're going to, and there's going to be parking and all this stuff. So I said, okay, cool. Um, that's, that's what we'll do. Um, and then my friend Heather Burke and my friend Ingrid and Shay Bellas, and we said, okay, we are going to make this the best conference ever. We are going to bring in these national experts, but we are also going to give the spotlight and a microphone to our local, um, folks like, um, like like Cumberland County Child Advocacy, we had Meg Hatch, Maine Children's Trust, I forgot her name, I want to say Tracy, um, Dee Clark with uh, Survivors Speak USA, Trisha Grant, um, sex therapist Jennifer Wiesner, um, who else did we have? Also, we had um, vendors. So if you, um, Courage Lives, and there's a, uh, just say no. And these different uh, organizations could have a table f free. And I also did like Facebook Lives so they could be promoted. So, okay, now I need to find a location. And I immediately thought East Point Church, like, like East Point Church. So, and they had just started Just Love, which was a boutique uh, clothing for sex trafficked survivors so they could go in and get the clothes that they needed to go job hunting or just decent, you know, clothes. So I reached out to East Point Church and 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 I was going to rent the space and East Point um, um, senior minister, is it Steve? Um, wrote me an email and said, we support Just Love, and that is where our support goes. And so we are not okay with you having your event here. Um, good luck. And so I was really devastated by that. And I just said, okay, universe, um, God, there's got to be something better you have in store. And I think it was Shay had told me about the Baptist church in Portland, Casco Baptist Church. 
I went over there and fabulous parking, beautiful church, stadium seating, like this was great. And so uh, they told me what their rent rental price was, no problem. And then meanwhile, you know, my people are are helping me get the get the word out and let people um, know that we're that we're doing this. And and the it wasn't as ma- I had hoped to have seven hundred people there. We had room for seven hundred people, um, but I didn't know how to reach the faith based world in Maine, and uh, I did the best I could. And there wasn't nearly enough faith leaders present. We did have a lot of social workers and teachers, and that was really good. They would not allow us to record uh, because it was proprietary information, and they didn't want to shoot themselves in a foot because if you know if you record it, then why would somebody hire them to come back? So I get it. I don't like it, but we did not record it. We did hire a band. Uh, that had children singing, which was really cool. And then we hired a band band for Friday night. Obviously, that was for me because there was only seven people there Friday night. But the band was awesome. It was uh, Gina and the Red Red Eye Flight, I think. They were amazing. And people said uh, that were there, they said that it was the best educational conference they had ever been to in their 20-something year career. Um, The one question people kept saying was, why aren't there more people? Um, uh, Somebody else said, if you would have charged, more people would have come. So I, and I still have conflict with that. I love the idea of the community paying so that, you know, the businesses and and private philanthropic folks paying so that we can offer this free of charge. The hindrance to conferences is out of state, out of town, um, uh, weekends when they've got kids in church on Sunday, sometimes, um, you know, uh, and the cost of them. So we, we set it up so that it is completely free of charge and we would uh, do food trucks so people wouldn't have to leave and then get pulled away and sucked into the real world and not be able to come back. So we wanted to make, make it entertaining. Um, Gary Richardson serenade. We had breakfast table set up and Gary Richardson was playing acoustic guitar and everybody talked about What a great way to shift energy coming in. You know, it was very, it was very thoughtfully planned. And I think it was, it was probably close to $30,000 for, for everything. And we wanted to give it as a love offering to our community. So that was the first one. Channel six was the only um, news that came to see it. But it was great. It was a lot of work, but it was great. And after that, so that was 2019. And right after that, I was nominated for the, let's see. Nope. There she is. The 2019 25 Most Outstanding Women by the Portland Radio Group. So that was really cool. I met, um, um, sorry, I met Regal Nassif there. Regal became my my grant writer. Uh, very cool. We were two eclectic individuals <laughs> that that met at that event. That was awesome. And right after that, I was taking a little three day break up to camp, and I pulled off the side of the road to check my, you know, check my texts, check my phone calls, because I knew, you know, the next mile I I would not have service for for some time. So I pulled over to to check it out, and I had an email from the White House. And I'm like, okay, so this must be spam. (laughs) 
this must be spam. And it had a phone number, Giovanni. And I'm like, is this real? So I called the number and Giovanni uh, answered and and she was like, yeah, you know, we're doing a roundtable conversation and we're inviting faith leaders across the United States. There's about uh, 30 of, of them, I guess. And we want to have a conversation about what's what sex trafficking look like at uh, in your world and what do you believe needs to be done about it. We really care about your opinion on this. And we would respectfully request that when you come that you are prepared to share with us what you think needs to be done. So while I'm talking to Giovanni, I'm listening to her. Yes, okay, I understood. And then I said, listen, I'm I'm trying to be as cool as I possibly can be right now. But you have to know that, that I'm just like going crazy on the inside of me and inside of myself. So that was uh, an amazing invitation, and it, and that's a another story about how that whole thing happened. That was that was wicked cool, and then um, and then I was invited back again in 2020 to the 20th anniversary of the anti-trafficking uh, bill, which was created by the Clintons and Ruchira Gupta. Ruchira Gupta uh, had won an Emmy on her documentary on sex trafficking in India and worked with the Clintons to craft the anti-trafficking bill. So she's like the grandmother of the whole anti-trafficking movement. So um, very cool. So when, uh, when COVID happened, actually, yeah, when COVID happened, I got a call from the uh, main school safety center. So every state has the Department of Education. The, the school safety centers are a branch of the Department of Education that was created when we started to have school shootings and little doggies who are Make a noise. Hey guys. So um, the main school safety center called and said, hey, everybody's doing this Zoom thing and we wanted to be able to continue to educate our community without being in person. So we're gonna do this Zoom and we wanna, uh, we want one of the days to be on trafficking and we were wondering if you would do a Zoom training for us on what is sex trafficking. And I'm like, of course. So that is on the Main School Safety Center website. And then there were lots of opportunities for for Zoom. And I was like, you know, gosh, I bet I could support the um well all the different people I've met in the in the Tony Robbins world. I bet I could do a Zoom with the, with the two houses that we have for sex traffic survivors in Maine and anybody else who wants to get on. So once a week, even though the houses um, are independent of each other, both houses agreed. And so once a week for an hour and a half, I think it was Tuesdays or Thursdays, um, we would Zoom the two houses together keep the participants um, anonymous, and then I would invite men and women all over the world, which is really cool, to share their experience, strength, and hope with these survivors in an effort to help uh, encourage them and motivate them and teach them some skills. That was so cool. Um, it, it was really, uh, and we did that for quite a while, which was really cool. And then we also raised money for, for them. Um, and during COVID, we found out, um, actually this, this gym 
owner, Brian Ligotti, reached out to me and said, hey, because of COVID, we're not, uh, there's no Toys for Tots this year. So we want to be able to raise money and toys and deliver them to the child welfare department. We did turkeys. We got turkeys for, for families. And I said, count, count me in. So we raised well over $20,000, bought all of these name brand toys, not the generic toys that sometimes poor kids get, but a real Barbie, which says Barbie, you know, matchbox, um, um, you need to go away. Go away, go away, go outside, go outside, go outside. There you go. Um, Matchbox toys, and it, uh, which was a huge hit. They were all masked up, and it was like doing a giant drug deal. You know, you're bringing, your cars are loaded with all this stuff, and you bring it to a, a um, um, parking lot, and you make the trade. Not, not really a trade. You're really just dropping it off. But So we did that, and in doing that, uh, one of the social workers that work for the state said, we don't even know what the term sex trafficking means. We don't know how to identify a sex trafficked minor. Like, we don't know what we're doing. Can you give us a private education? And I said, absolutely. Let me, let me see what I can do about that. And then I reached out to the main school safety center and I said, okay, um, I enjoyed working with you guys before. What do you think about collaborating with me? I will fund the training. I will bring in the experts from Zero Abuse and we could do a statewide virtual training. And they said, sure. And there was a lady, uh, Stephanie Anderson, who was the president of the Main State Prosecuting Attorneys Association, if I said that right, and she was supposed to retire, and she delayed her retirement so she could be a part of this and ensure that all, and they did, every one of the prosecuting attorneys across the state of Maine attended the conference. So it was three days. One day was teachers. Another day was social workers. Another day was prosecuting attorneys and law enforcement. So very cool. It was, um, I don't know, like $15,000, something like that to do, to do that. Again, um, free of charge. Oh, by the way, the 2019 one, um, anybody who needed continuing education credits, we worked with an organization under their umbrella so we could offer those continuing education credits for those participants. This one that we did virtual, we could offer contact hours. So everybody um, gave their email address and then they got um, a, a survey and after the conference and then when they filled that out, uh, what popped up was um, their, their uh, contact hours certificate that they could print out or download and, and, you, and use for their profession. So we had those three times and or those three groups. And it was unfortunate that the um, Department of Health and Human Services did not allow their social workers to participate. They were not confident that what we would what they would be learning from the national experts would be um, the same as what they were teaching. And since they were insecure about that, they would not allow their social workers to participate or even um, take a day off to participate on their own. So that was really unfortunate, very unfortunate. Um, we lost an opportunity to educate another 300 people. Uh, but we did get 679 participants. It was a it was an education where we where we opened 
the doors for people to go to all three trainings. So if you were a teacher and you wanted to understand, you know, what is a social worker looking for? Or maybe you want to understand more about the prosecuting attorney. Like what is, what is he or she looking for? You could, anybody could attend everybody's training, which I love because when you understand the full scope of things, it makes more sense and you can collaborate better. And we're all on the same team. So understanding what the role is for each of the players is, I think, is really important. Time consuming to like listen all day to somebody else's really powerful and important eye makeup. So we had um, excellent reviews, excellent participation. The Main School Safety Center was just a wonderful collaborator with me on this. And again, free of charge for all participants and they got continuing education, well, contact hours for their participation. So then the next one, I had a um, Homeland Security person outside of the state of Maine say, and and at, truthfully, I had, before COVID, I had police telling me, you know, um, three quarters of our unit is divorced now. Like, we have addiction, we have domestic violence, we have really high divorce. The stress of our job is really significantly impacting us personally and professionally, and we could use some help with this. And I had heard the same thing from the game warden's office, and they uh, they had great success with a chaplain that came in and gave them some education around trauma using the backpack uh, visual. You know, each dress is like a rock in your backpack, and you gotta like take that stuff out. And so I'm like, yeah, I want to do a thing on on trauma. So we. This time I collaborated with Department of Education and um, it wasn't as well um, put together. And I think we only had 350 maybe uh, people participating in, in that one. The, the segment that people liked the most was how to have a trauma-informed space. What if you're a school safety, uh, school resource officer, if you're a guidance counselor, if you're a therapist, like how, what your room should look like for a child to feel safe, a trauma-informed space. So that, that was really cool. Um, again, it was, uh, the numbers were disappointing, but it's a, you know, it's a learning process. So that was 2022, I think. Um, no, that was 2021. And then the next one we did, um, so that, that was completed. And then I got a call from the Catholic diocese. And they said, hey, our kids are sharing naked pictures. And I had, I had heard this before from a local middle school and before COVID, and I, um, I had done a training for the staff. So it was like 75 staff members, and I brought in my A-team. You know, I, I brought in addictions. I brought in sex therapist. Did I bring in sex therapist on that one? I think so. And I brought in Jonathan Sarbeck. That was awesome. And they said, please, 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 can you help us with technology? It took me many months because the uh, main state troopers' cyber crimes, they're two hours away. So it's four hours just in driving, you know. Um, so it took me a long time, but I finally um, got them down to the school. Um, but there was, uh, the principal had a significant medical event happen. So attendance was really bad. And the, and the parents were really bummed out because they didn't know about, about it. Um, so it was like, I don't know, 30 people maybe. Um, and it was a shame because 
We had amazing speakers at that one, but poor attendance. So, um, so fast forward, I get this call from the um, Catholic diocese and they say, Hey, our kids are sharing stuff and you know, this is not good. They don't understand that I, there's no such thing as delete, which was so funny that they said that. Yeah. So funny that they said that because, um, hmm. I wonder if you're still recording. I wonder if it's still recording. Um, it was really funny that they said that for, um, um, that they don't know that it's, you can delete it because the, the middle school that I was telling you about, it was funny. Um, there were grown-ups in the audience when the FBI guy was saying there's no such thing as delete. It was the grown-ups that were going, oh my gosh, you know, because the, the grown-ups are sharing sexually inappropriate things that they think they're not going to get caught. <laughs> right? And here the FBI is like, dude, or dude s, um, there's no such thing as delete. So here's the Catholic diocese saying, you know, these kids don't know that there's no such thing as um, delete. So that's why we call the conference undeletable. So I reached out to the main school safety center again and said, what's the deal? And, and they were great. They were like, okay, number one, it's not just the Catholic schools. It is the private and public schools across the state. I mean, before COVID, child exploitation was very bad. During COVID, it, it's just awful. The FBI are talking about how young athletic um, high school boys are being targeted and like it is just a show, right? It's just, it's not good. So Catherine, do you think that the Catholic church would be willing to one, make it public? So the public schools can be in on this. Do you think that they would, do you think your speakers would allow us to record? Remember up until now, uh, the speakers that I bring have not let me record. Um, and could we all come together? So remember that the one that we did where we had 679 and I said that the teachers and the social workers and the um, law enforcement and prosecuting attorneys could cross disciplinary train. That had never been done before. A training that opened up the doors for collaboration training um, had was the first time that's ever been done. So we did more toys that had ever been delivered uh, to the child welfare in the history of um, child welfare. That was cool. Multi-training, that was cool. And now church and state, very cool. The Catholic Church was super groovy. They were like, sure, we, we will open it up to public schools as well. And then um, the speakers said, yep, yeah, you, can, you, can, um, you can record. So I had somebody from Zero Abuse Project come, Allison Fay, who was fabulous. And then we had um, New Hampshire law enforcement. Um, uh, and we, we also had New Hampshire Homeland Security. We had Portland, Maine Homeland Security. And we had Maine law enforcement. They did a phenomenal job. And the last day, the first day, we had 350 kids in their seats. And the nuns uh, afterwards were saying that even the kids who, who are more likely to cause a ruckus were like leaning in and we had their full attention, like Allison was an amazing speaker. So, and again, food truck, so that um, uh, for the second day, the first day the kids got, had um, had their own school food, but the second day was for grownups. And we did not have the attendance on the second day. Um, word got out that it was gonna be recorded, 
and the grown-ups just chose not to come. Um, but our speakers did an amazing job, and it was well recorded. So that recording is on the website, stoptraffickingus.org, under events, and then you go to the undeletable event, scroll down to the bottom, and you will see everything that um, uh, that we that we did those two days. It's ph phenomenal. So yay. And then, um, you know, by this point, you know, I'm pretty um, tired um, because I'm having to do a lot of things that I'm not good at. So I am a visionary. I, I can see what needs to happen and what it should look like and all of that. But to integrate, to like make it happen is is not fun for me and it is uh, very stressful for me. Trying to find stuff on my computer, oh, somebody needs a bio, somebody needs a headshot, somebody needs whatever, like it, it is, it takes me 18 million times longer to find things and do things than it does for other people. Uh, my first PowerPoint presentation in 2014, I think, took me 90, nine zero, nine zero hours to put together my little stick people presentation. Just, just not my, it's not my jam. I wish that I had people who could do the things that need to be done that would make this a fun experience for me because it could be, could be fun. But I was like ready to stop the nonprofit uh, last year. I was like, I am fried. <laughs> I just, I need a break. But I, I knew not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And like, maybe if I just take a little time, you know, to rest, you know, I'll rally. So I just like, I'm just going to put a pause and I stopped doing a lot of the other things. Um, but I did have, I did have a, a, a survivor say, Hey, I want to, I want to go to school. I want to get my, my beauty license. And so that Brian Ligotti, uh, he paid for that kid's young lady's tuition. And somebody else uh, said, hey, if I only had these tools, I could, I could make things to sell and fund my nonprofit. Here you go. Somebody else said, I need first, last, and security. Here you go. A couple of people needed dentures. That was very expensive. Here you go. Um, but I try not to do stuff like that because the money that it takes to do those things, I could educate thousands of people. So I have to like go, okay, where's my narrow lane? So over time I've done less and less, although we do have a survivor now that wants to go back to school for her drug counselor license uh, certificate. So um, Brian is going to, to fund that. So anyway, I'm, I'm like done, I need a break. Uh, it is December 22nd and I get a, a letter. Oh, I forgot to tell you about um, last summer. Uh, last summer, I um, the New England Patriots, Mr. Kraft and, and, and Myra Kraft, Myra died of cancer and they have a foundation and they choose 25 nonprofits across the um, across New England and they give those nonprofits uh, $10,000. And I got to be I'm not gonna, well, I will reach it, hang on. Oh. Here it is. So, I was uh, one of those 25 um, people and that $10,000 paid uh, a third of last fall, the Catholic Diocese, that was $30,000. My friend Kathy and her husband Rick gave seven thousand dollars. My husband's company, Portland Pump, 
they always, like I, I try to get as much money as I possibly can, and then I trust that whatever I'm short, that Charlie's company will take care of whatever's left. And my goal is for them not to have to pay anything because they pay my overhead so that none of the donations I get go to overhead. 100% of every penny of donation that comes in, except from Charlie's company, goes to the educational things only. So, um, um, where's my... I got $3,000 from May Marathon last year, actually a little more than that. That was cool. Um, every bit, every bit helps. Um, uh, 7,000 from Brian, just, excuse me, 5,000 from Brian, just amazing. So I'm done, I'm tired, and we're gonna go away uh, for a little bit in the summer, in the winter. December 22nd, I get an email saying that there's $300,000 that have been tagged for Stop Trafficking US and the conferences that we do. And like, I didn't believe it. Like I'm, I'm calling my people saying, is this true? Like what the heck is happening? And it's true. So um, it's July 20th right now. So August 30th, um, that money is supposed to hit my bank account. So when I found out about that money, you know, I had prayed and said, God, I need money and I need help. <laughs> Give me some helpers who are, who love and are good at doing the things that I'm weak in but need to have done. And I'm so tired of chasing money. Like, I'm really tired of chasing money. It's aggravating. It's like there's so much money in this state. Like, give me your money. Give me, give me your money so we can, like, make a difference. So, um, cause no, nobody else is a hundred percent like every, anyway. So, um, so I, I find out about that money and I call Victor and I say, Hey, I have this money. Um, you, you work with all the States across the United States. You know, he used to be the prosecuting attorney for crimes against children at the white house. He's good friends with somebody I admire so much, Dr. David Finkelhor out of the University of New Hampshire um, Crimes Against Children Research Lab. Phenomenal organization. So um, uh, I said, okay, you know, you know better than I do. How can I spend this money that would be the best for my community? And he said, and I'm going to turn to read this, um, ca cast. So within the universities, the, the classes that universities offer, you know, math, science, history, right? Um, they are not currently in Maine offering child abuse study training, CAST. And the Zero Abuse Project, they got a, a federal grant for the curriculum so they can offer the curriculum, but they cannot help the teacher with loss of income for that finite little piece of time that they're not getting paid while they get up to date, um, while they learn how to teach the program. So right now, the University of Maine Augusta and I are working on that. Um, Strategies for Youth, it's a juvenile justice jeopardy game by uh, Lisa Turo. Um, Empower Me and Kids First are both from the Zero Abuse Project. Kids First, um, so if, it, if a child discloses abuse to the school bus driver or a teacher or, or whoever, if they have not been trained properly, they may inadvertently do or say something that hurts the case as it makes its way to and through prosecution. So if they knew what to say and how to handle it, it would be better for everybody um, if they did. So Kids First is that program. Um, 
empower me. Um, also, the conference that we did in 2019 for faith leaders um, was great. It was my first conference. It was great, but it was not what I envision it to be. So that is still on the table. And I just, for the life of me, I, I just struggle with this one. Uh, I tried to talk to people early in the year and, and one of the guys was like, you know, we just don't, we're not going to send our congregation to something, our leaders to something that we don't know. Like are basically is the curriculum you're teaching Christian enough? I get it. You know, I, I get it. Um, so could we all get on a Zoom call with the trainers, with Boz and Victor and Pete and Allison? And like, you can ask them the questions. I have been ineffective, but it will happen. Um, and I had mentioned earlier that I wanted to do a trauma conference, but not like what we did. I, I had something else in mind. So, so cool. October 27th of this year, 2023, it is a private, it is my first private conference. It needs to be. So it is for Homeland Security agents, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, if they want to come, law enforcement and prosecuting attorneys. These are the people who read and see things that are really traumatizing. I have three amazing speakers and it's so interesting, again, connecting the dots, as God would have it, I get a, an a email from the University of New Hampshire Crimes Against Children Research Lab. I am on a committee um, on a particular project with them. So they were given a million dollar grant two years ago to research best practices when law enforcement engages with a sex trafficked minor. So perfect for, for me. Well, I haven't, um, I've been out of touch for a while and you know, just every now and then, hey, how you doing kind of thing. And they said, hey, why don't you come on down? I wanna to talk to you and fill you in and let, it, let you know what we're doing. And just happened to be, right? This is the way it works. It just happened to be uh, the same time that I am engaging with Homeland Security about this conference and I'm talking to the speakers and trying to put everything together and the ball is rolling and and I'm not having to push it and struggle like with the faith um, leaders one right this is like it's flowing it's going with grace and ease so um I go down and I said, you know, they told me what's going on with them and what they needed and all that. And, and I shared, hey, I'm going to do this conference for, um, for the law enforcement. And they're like, Catherine, we've done the research on this. We have all this amazing data, what works and how to do it. And, and I'm thinking they're going to, you know, give me their PowerPoint presentation or something. And they're like, we'd be happy to speak That is so exciting, so exciting. And then, um, and then Homeland Security said, hey, um, mom. Hi, mom. Hi, how did your thing go? Good, it went really well. Um, can I call you back in a minute? Sure. All right, thanks, bye. So, um, so, they said they would they would speak. I'm like, oh my gosh. So Homeland Security says, uh, hey, I need to change the date because we're we're gonna we've got a, a thing happening and um, could it be this date? And I reach out to the speakers, I'm like, gosh, it's been going so well. Please, 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 please let it continue to go well. And the speaker said, sure, we'll make that date work. 
And I'm like, the University of New Hampshire, oh my gosh, what are the odds? Please, please, please be, you know, have be available. They're available too. Yes. So that is all fabulous. Um, very, uh, very excited about that. And then um, uh, an interesting point, um, Homeland Security said, Catherine, by the way, um, Homeland Security does a study every four years on what the priority is for the following preceding four years. Um, and this year, 2023, for the first time that they've been doing these studies, child sexual exploitation is number one priority. Number one. They said prior to COVID, it, it was awful. During COVID, blew up. And now it's our top priority. So there you, there you have it. So uh, the other interesting thing was I made up that it was um, um, the visual, like seeing the things that they see, like maybe they have nightmares, maybe, you know, they can't sleep at night, maybe the images of what they see haunts them or whatever. And um, to my surprise, it is um, chats. There's so much um, chats happening. What they read sears them more than what they see. I thought that was really interesting. So that is sort of, I think my husband's walking up towards my she shed and the dog is four months old and being protected. So that is the story of um, some of the thing. I Someday I want to tell you about what going to the White House was like, but um, I'm going to let you go now. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Bye.